Welcome, Bronco Nation, to my game review for Boise State versus Utah State. Boise State winning this game big, 62-30. to For anybody who thought that last week's game was a fluke when Boise State won big at home, Boise State has shown that that is not the case. They are on a roll now. They have now gone out and gotten their fourth win of the season, and they have now advanced to 62-30 and overall, 4-1, and and will certainly be moving up at least one or two spots in the rankings from number 21. A lot of teams below them losing this week, for sure. Crazy week for college football. But for Boise State on the blue, it was a fantastic game. We're going to go through the offense, the defense, the special teams. We're going to grade each of those units. We'll look at their overall performance. We'll also go through the keys to the game that I had for Boise State and look at how Boise State performed against those and grade those as well. But before we do any of that, I will talk about the score predictions here. There were a lot of really, really good ones out there, Bronco Nation. Several people that were right on it with the offensive score. One of two points off or right on, 62 points. A lot of predictions right. Unfortunately, nobody, and about across everybody predicting this game, nobody got the defensive score correctly, that 30 points right there. So unfortunately, I did change the rules last week. I'll shout out multiple people if multiple people get the score exactly right. However, in this case, only one person is going to get shouted out because I'm just going to take the closest score that there was. And this guy was actually really, really close. A very loyal listener. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, you, if you've watched, and I'm sure again, because I've said you're a loyal listener, if you've watched my other videos, you know how terrible my name pronunciation is. I mean, everybody heard me trying to pronounce the uh, Utah State quarterback. Uh, I think I was calling him Petraeus, which is just completely, completely off. So everybody knows I can't pronounce names. That go, that imply, that applies to the commenters as well on the video. So Wapiti128, W-A-P-I-T-I-128. Fantastic score prediction, 63 to 24. A real shout out this week. Fantastic job. I mean, again, you were almost exactly right on there with the score prediction. So thanks so much, everybody, for participating in that. Keep doing that. It's going to be another exciting one to predict next week. So getting into this game, though, for Boise State versus Washington's, uh, sorry, versus Utah State, this was a huge win for Boise State. They The first half, Boise State had more combined uh, yardage, 776 yards than any Boise State and Utah State combined had more more yards than any FBS teams at halftime of any matchup this season. So a lot of yards going back and forth both ways, but not a lot of points, obviously, uh, until kind of back in there for Utah State. But Boise State, 62 to 30. First half, it was 49 to 17. So even though Utah State was really moving the ball quite effectively, I mean, they had 337 yards of offense in the first half. Those were not translating into points. Complete opposite for Boise State. 439 yards in the first half, 230 yards passing, 209 yards rushing, and again, translating into 49 points both through both the ground and the passing game. Boise State ending this game 599 yards, just one yard short of 600, 303 yards passing, 296 yards rushing. So obviously taking the pedal off the gas there in the second half. But when you look at those overall yardage numbers, the rushing yards, 296, I mean, that's that's what you expect, right? Ashton Genty, oh, another incredible game for him, 186 yards rushing. He now has over 1,000 yards rushing. He's the first running back in the country to do that this season. Again, he hasn't played for two second halves this entire year. I mean, missed the second half versus Portland State because we were up by such a big lead. And again, in this one versus Utah State. So even though Boise State, now they've advanced to 4-1, they've played five games, he's really only played four games overall, and he's had 1,000-plus yards rushing. It's absolutely incredible. 13 carries, 186 yards, 14.5-yard average, three touchdowns. And again, that was just at the half. If he'd gone for another second half, he'd have had 300-plus. But Wise decision, not risking the injury. But allowed Boise State to get some other players in. And we'll talk about that, the performance of some of these other players in this game. But before we do any of that, I do want to talk about another stat line here. Because, again, we expect the rushing yards. What we don't maybe expect is the passing numbers. 303 yards passing overall. And Maddox Madsen accounted for 256 of that very, very efficient day. 21 of 25 for 256 yards passing Three touchdowns. He did have one sack, but no interceptions. A near pick. We'll talk about that. But overall, really, really strong game. 230 yards of that, by the way, was at half. So 230 yards at half. He had he came in, he played one drive in the second half, and he was out a couple of drives. And then, you know, Washington State scored. Uh, sorry, Utah State. I'm going to do that a bunch this game. I apologize. Uh, you, everybody knows that I'm talking about Utah State. So if it happens, asterisk, you know, I'm talking about Utah State. Again, but anyhow, he, um, he had... Utah State scored a couple quick ones there, and so uh, or scored a touchdown and then an interception. And then uh, so Max Benson came back into the game for one more drive, settled the offense back down, really cement this win, and then Nelson came back in, in the second half. Uh, but I do want to address something here, obviously. In my preview to this video, I took a moment to talk to 
the anti Maddox Madsen portion of uh, Bronco Nation. Though, again, I, I'd say if you're rooting against a player, I don't think you're part of Bronco Nation. But there is also a significant portion of the anti Maddox Madsen base that aren't necessarily rooting against him. They're just refusing to see any of the positives that he could do. And I, I want to talk to you for a moment here right now because the the point that I'm making with the Maddox Madsen haters, and I am going to call them haters here because a hater is just the opposite of a homer okay so a hater and homer they're the same biases a, ho a homer is someone who can't see anything past their own fan bias who's always going to predict a win for boise state who's always going to say that our team is the best team no matter what that is our players are the best players no matter what that whatever conference we're in is the best conference no matter what that the pac-12 is is the best conference in all of college football we deserve to be power four right now today and you know, obviously, you know, discussions like that, saying basically that anything that's negative, I'm going to ignore. I'm only going to look at the positives. I'm going to skew those positives in my direction. Well, a hater is just the opposite of that. A hater is just somebody who is completely biased, again, is not looking at anything objectively, objectively, and is just looking at the negatives. And say those, I, for instance, and again, I'm not calling anybody, all people, who call out Maddox Madison or criticize Maddox Madison haters. It's totally fair to criticize his gameplay, as it is any player on this roster, but it's how you go about it. Are you also acknowledging the positives? Or are you saying, when Maddox Madison does something good, it's because the defense made a mistake? Or when Maddox Madison plays well, it's because the defense was weak? Or we, Maddox Madsen, yeah, okay, sure, he had those stats. I don't care about that. What I care about is these near picks that he had. That's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to ignore the touchdowns that he had and the completions. I don't even, I'm not even mention those. I'm only going to ever mention, I'm going to ever talk about Maddox Madsen when it's the negatives. When he does something positive, I'm going to ignore it. When he does something negative, I'm going to say that that proves my point. You're looking for confirmation bias, and that's what a hater is, and that's who I'm talking to right now. And so when it comes to Maddox Madsen, what is your end goal here? What do you want? When you're having these discussions, when you're talking about if Matt, about Max Matson, what's the end objective of that conversation? Is your point to prove that he's not one of the best quarterbacks in Boise State history? Because guess what? You're right on that. We all know that. Nobody is out here saying that Maddox Matson is Kellen Moore. I don't even think that Maddox Matson is in the is he's at the bottom of the list of all the quarterbacks I've seen start for Boise State. I put him behind Joe Southwick. I put him behind Grant Hedrick. You know, Kellen Moore, Jared Zabransky, Taylor Tharp, Ryan Dinwiddie. So I mean, that's I think that's all. You know, obviously Bachmeyer and Green. I mean, I would put him behind all of those quarterbacks for Boise State. I, nobody's out here saying that Maddox Matson is this kind of incredible elite athletic talent that has cemented himself as one of the best players in Boise history. No, nobody's saying that. But not because Maddox Madsen is a terrible quarterback, but because those quarterbacks were great quarterbacks. They were elite quarterbacks. And so most of them anyway. But even, you know, Hank Bachmeyer, he just won with Wake Forest today. He did a great job. And I think a lot of issues that he had here were the circumstances of the time, and especially that offensive line. Taylor Green, Taylor Green's Arkansas team just beat Tennessee. So even the quarterbacks that have been criticized heavily at Boise State still either accomplished a lot while they were here or able to go outside and accomplish elsewhere, showing that they were great quarterbacks. And so while Maddox Madsen may be at the bottom of that list, I the point that a lot of I think Max Madsen haters are making is that he's just a terrible quarterback he's not a terrible quarterback I do believe he's not the best quarterback I've seen at Boise State and and, and technically he's the worst quarterback I've seen at Boise State but that's because that bar is so high he's still a good quarterback for the situation that we have right now and so if your point is that he's not the best quarterback in school history, okay, nobody's trying to make that point. But if your point is that Maddox Madsen shouldn't be the starter or that he's not an effective contributor to this team, I would have to sincerely question your objectivity in that analysis. We've seen what Malachi Nelson is capable of right now. I think that he is capable of far more better things in the future. I really do. I, th I see a great future for him at Boise State once he's had time to develop. But even in this game, we've seen the stark comparisons. Maddox Madsen, under pressure, senses the pressure, runs for four yards, takes a pop, has to go out. Malachi Nelson comes in, and I, I, I am not disregarding the context of the situation coming off the bench into a tough situation. It's a th uh, third down play, I believe, at that point. So third down play. So I'm not I'm not discounting that, but we see a difference right away. Malachi Nelson in a passing situation, pressure comes, sack, almost fumbles, almost fumbles the ball. They reach for it. They hit it. He's able to corral it, hold on to it, and goes down. But it's a sack. 
Max Madsen, four-yard scramble. Malachi Nelson, sack. He's, Max, Malachi Nelson's played limited reps. He's had two sacks. Max Madsen has played extended reps. He's played started for all of Boise State so far this season. He's had two sacks, one in this game and one versus Oregon. That's it. He's had two sacks all season long. And so for Boise State, if you're looking at effectiveness, Malachi Nelson clearly isn't at that level. Interception today. Yeah, you want to talk about near picks for Maddox Madsen? What about an actual pick for Malachi Nelson, okay? So Malachi, and I, I do think the booth review was bad. I think I think that it should not have been an interception, but it was ruled an interception, and it was confirmed as, or I think it was reversed, actually. Or no, it was confirmed. Confirmed as an interception on the field. So for, uh, for Malachi Nelson, he's clearly not at that elite level that he could potentially get to yet either. Maddox Madsen, when he's running this offense, he does it smoothly. He does it effectively. He it, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. He may have some near interceptions, and we're going to talk about those, but he may have some near interceptions, but at the same time, he also gets the ball quickly down to the wide receivers, and he gives this Boise State offense a chance to have stability at the quarterback position, hand the ball off to Ashton Genty, not take any negative yardage sacks, which would hurt the running game, not get turn, force any turnovers, which again would hurt the running game, because if you're a running offense, you're going be running slower you're not being built for fast attack offense all you need if you can avoid turnovers you can win all day we've seen that with air force army navy over the past years but kills those teams when is when they start getting negative yards plays or interceptions and boy state right now is kind of in a navy army air force type situation they're not running the option but the running game is the focus of their offense and so for boise state with Maddox Madsen, what you get there is you may not get the explosive play, but you also don't get anything that's going to hurt the running game, which is the biggest element of Boyd State's offense right now. And then on the other end of things, with Maddox Madsen, he is still capable of moving this offense, and he proved that today. Everyone, you know, you again, haters looking at, at Maddox Madsen saying, well, he just did that because it's a weak Utah State uh, uh, defense. Utah State's defense was averaging giving up 257.5 yards passing per game. Is that elite? No, it's not elite. But Maddox Madsen at half had 230 yards. Utah State, season long, per game, 257.5 yards passing per game. Maddox Madsen at half, 230 yards at half. And they took the foot off the gas and basically ran the ball the entire second half. And, and again, who, who have they played? Well, Utah State has played USC. USC, 230 yards. Maddox Madsen had that at halftime. Utah, in a fight for their lives. USC taking their foot off the gas, same as Boy State, huge win, 48-0, something like that. Utah was in a fight for their life pretty much throughout that entire game, only 239 yards passing. Yeah, it was the backup to Cam Rising, but that backup has now become their primary starter now in the absence of Cam Rising. And he's 2-1, and one, including a win versus, uh, versus Oklahoma State. And so, again, Maddox Madsen did better than those teams. Maddox Madsen played well against this program, against a Utah State team. So if your point, again, at the end of the day, is that Maddox Madsen is not the best quarterback in school history, we all agree in that sense. But if your point is that there's a better option for Boise State, that he shouldn't be the starter right now, that's completely false. That's com That's been proven false in this game by not just Maddox Madsen stepping up and performing exceptionally. He had a great game today. 21, 25, 256 yards, three touchdowns, one sack, one near pick, not an actual pick. Even if he'd thrown that pick, it would have still been a great game for him. Three touchdowns overall, 250 plus yards passing, but it didn't. So the stat doesn't count. But again, great game overall for Maddox Madsen. So he's stepping up. We're going to talk about that. He's proven he can run this offense. Malachi Nelson, though, he, he's just not there yet. And I think it, you see elements of it, and we'll talk about that here. So Maddox Madsen obviously comes out, Malachi Nelson comes in sack. But what we saw beyond that wasn't just that Malachi Nelson was dropping down to prove Maddox Madsen was better. Maddox Madsen was stepping up. The fans have complained that Matt, that Boise State's offense can't move the ball when Ashton JP gets stopped. Maddox Madsen proved that's false today. Drive number three. Boise State had a 75-yard touchdown drive, one in which Genty was completely bottled up. He had two carries for six yards. Dubar had one carry for, for zero yards. Max Madsen led a 75-yard touchdown drive, including a 10-plus-yard pass to Camper, another 20-yard pass to, to uh, Ladder on the tight end screen, and then a touchdown pass to Camper. Drive number eight for Boise State, 86-yard drive. 62 of those yards came through the air, including passes to Camper, Caples, Penry, and then a pass to Bolt for a touchdown. A game when Ashton Genty was not the primary focus of that offense. Today, when Utah State stopped Ashton Genty, Maddox Madison was still able to go out and perform. And people are saying, well, okay, that's because Ashton Genty. If Ashton Genty wasn't out there, then Boise State, then Maddox Madison wouldn't be as great. Yeah, that's true. 
yeah, if you take your star running back out of the game, the offense isn't going to be as good. Nobody's arguing that. Nobody's arguing that we can win games purely through the air, that we can sit Ash and Genty for the entire game, and that we can go out in an air raid attack and win matchups. Nobody's arguing that. But the point is that Maddox Madsen can still move this ball effectively when Ash and Genty is stopped. Ash and Genty is still a threat the defense has to account for. And Maddox Madsen, when he is given the opportunity, when now that he has this chemistry that he's built over the last two games versus Portland State and Washington State, now that he has these other weapons stepping up in the passing game, like Penry, like, uh, like Matt Louder, and then Camper already established in that passing offense, when those other players are now having that chemistry with him, when they stop Ash and Genty, Boise State can win through him. Now, again, if Ash and Genty's off the table, it's probably a different circumstance, but that's not the point. If Ash, if Ash and Genty's out of this offense, Boise State's season is in a completely different trajectory anyway. He's your best player. It's like if Boise State loses Kellen Moore. You know, if, Boise, if you lose your best player who is the center focus of your offense, of course you're not going to be the same offense as you were before. But the point is, can the other pieces work with that focal point to assist, to blend, and to go out and be a strong performing factor together and not just the offense have to flow through just one person? And Maddox Matz in the Boise offense proved that decisively today. This was a great game for the Boise State offense. The passing game especially, uh, you know, tons of wide receivers getting in the mix. Chase Penry leading receivers. I've been really excited about his potential from even last season, obviously getting injured, but coming into the offseason, coming into this year, I really thought Penry could step up in a big way. Capel's obviously back, which is awesome. Capel's back from his injury. There were some doubts whether or not he'd be able to return. He's back. I think he was probably on a limited snap count because he only did have the one reception for 14 yards. However, Chase Penry proving that he is a reliable target for Boise State. Four receptions, 74 yards, 18.4 yard average, including a 42 yard reception. A beautiful out of a Boise State that had two penalties back to them back to second and 23. Maddox Batson hit Chase Penry on a beautiful pass. Malachi Nelson esque. Beautiful pass on the seam route. It looked very similar to the pass that uh, that he, that Malachi Nelson had thrown to. I think it was Lee Austin Terry uh, last versus Portland State on that long street seam route when Boise State was in third and twenty something yards. Very very similar throws. Very very similar routes. Chase Perry taking the ball down to the six. The Ash Genty doing what Ash Genty does, bouncing outside for a touchdown. Uh, Pinch Strawn, that's he's been almost a non-existent part of this offense. He finally stepping up into the game. Max Madsen did miss him on a deep pass. It's one of the criticisms for Maddox Matson in this game. He had some really great throws. He got the ball out quickly, but he did have a couple of times there where he th underthrew the ball or overthrew the pass. So on that one to Prince Strong, that was an underthrow. It was double coverage, but hey, put that out in front. Maybe he can run underneath it. The very worst thing you can do is throw a back shoulder throw with two defenders on you and luckily none of them turned around to intercept that pass and so that's a bad throw by Max Madsen again the other one is to Matt Louder on the when he's running the in route and he throws it high he is under a lot of pressure at that moment but he throws it high through the hands of the defender probably would have been a pick six two bad plays by Maddox Madsen he's not perfect he wasn't perfect in this game and it's good that he has things he can look to to grow and to build on moving forward the rest of the season and into next week uh, but overall strong performances like I said Said, Prince Strawn finding him consistently in this matchup. Four receptions, 58 yards, 14.5 uh, yard average. Louder having another huge game. Not as big as previous two with 90 plus yards receiving those previous two games, but still a good one. Three for 33, average of 11. Bolt, Austin Bolt, hey, another guy that Boise State started trying to target versus Washington State just wasn't effective doing it. This game, they were. He is obviously a key part of their off this offense. They are, the coaches are clearly trying to work him into the scheme, especially when you get inside the red zone. Two touchdowns for Bolt, 4 of 24, two touchdowns overall, like I said. And then another player stepping up, Cam Bates, reset, one reception for 19 yards, and then he also had an end around another run at uh, second half for the Nelson uh, for a long of 17 there. So Boise State having wide receivers stepping up all across the board, and then uh, Austin Terry also having a reception for seven yards. And so Boise State's offense, a variety of wide receivers, tons of targets, not all of them coming in the second half and playing. I mean, most of these guys, except for maybe Terry, all got targets of some form in the first half from a Boise State starting offense. So the Boise State is fine. They they were overloaded by the talent potential that this offense had the what is wide this depth of wide receiver room and i mean even dirk cutter even mentioned it that it was a problem trying to figure out how to effectively use all of these weapons and i think you're starting to see them settling into their pieces each player having that role that they know that they are designed for i mean cam camper obviously he's the go-to wide receiver on the mid deep route strawn is your deep player penry 
and 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 Capels, they're both settling into that slot role really nice. Then Louder, kind of you do it all tight end. You throw him out on screen. You throw him to for a deep pass. You throw him for mid range. He's been able to really figure out everything. And then Cam Bates is kind of that exciting jack of all trades weapon that you could throw out into a variety of situations. And he's going to just be explosive because he's that level of athlete. And so I think the way that this Boy State offense has melded today, and even coming into the second half when Utah State was still playing their starters, their primary starters, the backups for Boy State was it as good as the first half with the primary starters? No. But it was still a very good, strong second half overall for Boise State's offense. Some good, strong moments, even though the consistency wasn't necessarily there. Boise State still put up 13 points in the second half with primarily backups versus Utah State's primary starters out there. And so Boise State in this game offensively, I thought it was a great game overall. Again, Genty, cute, first touch of the game, 63-yard touchdown, breaks multiple tackles. Just incredible. Has another one, 70-plus yard run later in the game, and then a three, uh, then a his third touchdown from short range, about six yards. Genty's just absolutely incredible, and we would be having a different season if he wasn't out there. Again, that's 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 a mute point. It's not it, 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 you're not looking at the same Boy State team if he wasn't out there. But the point that I'm trying to make is that the offense overall, from the offensive line through the wide receivers and up to the quarterback, are all working in tandem with Ash and Genty to make this the explosive 62 point. 590 plus yard offense that we see if it's just Ash and Genty out there by himself and the passing game isn't a threat he's not going to be as effective and I think we started to see that in this game Maddox Madsen he started they shut down Genty he proves the passing game is a threat okay now they got to go back to the air and that opens up opportunities I mean Boise State was trying to run the ball inside all game they couldn't really do it until Maddox Madsen started throwing that ball on the outside Bates campers big passes to both of them 19 22 yards then suddenly the open the the middle opens up Ash and Genty's able to run for 12 plus yards just straight up ahead and so Boise State I think we're starting to see an even more exciting explosive offense than what we've seen so far this year but so far this season it's been an exciting season so far this has been a great ride for Boise State fans but I think we're just getting started I think you need to buckle up your seat belts because we're about to put this thing into turbo charge and the Boise State offense that we're going to see in the second half of the season now that we're starting to see that chemistry now that Max Madison's had that confidence boosting game like this one now that we're starting to see other weapons not besides just you know Camper and, and Ashton Genty stepping up on this offense you're going to see a Boise State offense that is each each of those elements can be more productive that Genty is going to be more productive because the defense is not, isn't going to be able to key in on him quite as much. And the passing game is going to be more productive because they're going to still continue to key in on Genty, but now there's chemistry in the passing game. So Boise State's offense overall, very, very, very impressed. The backups getting in the game, you know, Nelson, he had a rough game. You know, came sack first off the bat there, first drive, uh, you know, not great. Kind of throws, has an incompletion, a drop there to Bolt. That wasn't his fault, but, you know, they have to punt and then drive number two for him. He comes in, double pumps, throws high, throws an interception high and behind. It was a, it was a, it was a really bad throw, but I, that shows his inexperience, and it's why he's not ready. But then again, he comes in after dry, after Max Benson's come back in, settled things down, and led to touchdown. He comes back in and plays really well. Well, I'm really, really happy that he had an opportunity to come back in after a mistake and to to kind of rectify things. Let these boys stay all the way down to the red zone where they take a knee. But on that drive, he had a really beautiful throw, beautiful throw on the on the uh, slant low away from the defender and he, effortless and just flick the wrist and it's right there for Strawn and then he had another great throw I really I thought he had another great throw right after that uh, to Penry who's beautiful in, tra in traffic you know behind above uh, above and, and around two defenders great throw and then another one to put it down into the red zone out of bounds before they then end up taking those knees and so you know obviously I think there was some confusion about why is Maddox Madsen coming back in well, I think part of that is that Boise State has learned their mistakes from Colorado State. You don't want to think, you want to stop, get it. It's like dealing with a toddler, right? If they start gearing up towards a tantrum, if you can get in there and stop them and calm them down before that happens, you're going to be much better than trying to get in there once things start to fall off the rails. And so, you know, Utah State had come in and played well, good defensive stop, a couple of good defensive stops, and 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 a scored a touchdown of their own. And then you throw a pick and momentum started to shift. Throw your starting offense back out there, minus Genty. Nice, long, thoughtful drive put it in for a touchdown and then Nelson comes back out. I think it would have been great to have Nelson be able to come back in after the mistake and be able to rectify right away. But who knows? Maybe the, the coaches know better than, than we do from the sideline or not. You know, I wasn't on the sideline. This one, unfortunately, I'm back home now. But, you know, watching from TV or the sideline as fans, you know, we the coaches know better the mindset. How how Nelson came to the sideline after that pick. Was he really kicking himself? Was he, did they have to kind of build him back out before they put him out there? So I just like decision overall, settled the offense down. Nelson comes back out and plays well on the back end. He showed, you know, that last that last drive, he showed 
why he is such an exciting potential for Boise State. And why I think in the future he's going to be an incredible talent, incredible part of this Boise State offense and coming into next season. But he's also shown why just this year, this game, this game should effectively have ended any type of quarterback controversy that could have been at Boise State. Because Maddox Madison has clearly shown that he is the best choice to run this offense, that he can do it effectively. First off, he had a great game, that he can be a strong contributor himself. But also compared to what is the other alternative, you might have a quarterback out there who can throw those beautiful passes, but he's also going to take the sacks. He's also going to throw the interceptions because he just doesn't have the experience and the game awareness, which a game, again, separates Maddox Matson and makes him elite, even when he's not being able to make the great throws and have the great chemistry like we've seen today when we've seen the past uh, games coming into this, into this one. Even when he doesn't have that chemistry, he still has the awareness piece. He's still doing a good job of managing the game and not putting the ball into trouble most of the time and not taking those those sacks, which are just drive killers. So for overall, for Boise State offensively, I thought it was a very, very impressive performance. I thought the passing game finally rose to the occasion. I thought the running game continued to be the running game. And if Boise State hadn't taken their foot off in the second half, it would have been, you know, 70 plus points so i'm going to give this offense an a plus because i think the performance we saw in the first half is indicative of what this boy state offense is truly capable of and what they would have done if they hadn't taken the foot off a little bit and so for boy state incredible inc one of the best first halves i've seen in a long time this was this was reminiscent of of the glory days of the golden days of boise state football the reason that i said we are back after the oregon game because it feels that way and this felt like one of those matchups from the past boise state beating up on a down mountain west team which in the past this would not have been a guarantee and it would not have been this big of a win so huge win huge offensive performance a plus performance for this boise state offense now moving on to this boise state defense yeah, if you look at just the stats, and I think even watching it live, I was like, this doesn't feel like we're playing that well defensively. But when you look at the results, the results of the drives, I really don't care if you drive from the one to the up to the other one, you know, 99 yards, if that last yard doesn't end in a touchdown, especially if it ends in a missed field goal or something like that on the end. But if we're stopping you from putting the ball into the end zone, that is what is most important. So Boise State gives up 507 yards. 372 yards passing, 135 yards rushing, and most of that in the first half, honestly. I know Utah State came out strong. They played their starters, I think, the entire game. I don't think even on the last drive that Utah State was resting their starters. And Boise State did play their starters on defense until the last drive all the way throughout that entire game. And so, yes, they Utah State was bringing it the entire matchup, but most of their yards came in the first half. Boise State actually did a pretty good job overall of stopping them in the second half. 262 yards passing in the first half, 75 yards rushing, ended the game with 372 yards passing overall and 135 yards rushing. 17 touch, uh, 17 points in the first half, 13 points in the second half. So even though 500 plus yards for this offense from Utah State, they only scored 30 points. And you know a couple of those were in the second half when Boise State, again, the offense was, really wasn't giving much to the defense and they'd taken again, that foot off the pedal. And so Boise State defensively overall, I, I think there were some some issues, some concerns, some elements that you need to build on. You know, the, only one sack, uh, seven tackles for loss. That was great. That's that's not a concern. We'll talk about that in a second. But one sack um, and then 507 yards, 372 yards passing. And the biggest point on this is that while Boise State gave up a couple of deep throws, they did give up a couple of deep throws here and there. Um, and Royal is just a, such a tough wide receiver to stop. He's reason he was the key player of the game for Utah State, or one of them. 59-yard touchdown and 75-yard touchdown. While he did have some deep receptions, and there were some other deep ones throughout, the point that Utah State was having the most impact versus Boise State, it wasn't on the deep throws. It was on the short passes. I mean, some of those were just straight-up wide receiver screens inside. Uh, that's, that 75-yard touchdown was a slant. That was just a, that was a, a pass that should have been, at the very least, taken down at a tackle after an 8-yard gain. McCoy, unfortunately, whiffing on that one. And he just runs all the way for a touchdown. But that happened time and time again. Utah State would throw that mid-range, you know, between 5 and 10 yards, and it would become a 20-plus yard, 15-plus yard pass. Almost, you know, not almost every single time, but pretty consistently throughout that matchup. And that is a, that is an issue for concern. Boise State uh, opting for more of a 4-5 man blitz for a lot of this one. Not the high pressure element that we saw versus Oregon or that we saw versus Washington State. Going for a little bit more of a coverage look. I'm not going to say that because they were still blitzing. Anytime you bring more than four, it's still a blitz because you're still bringing one man unaccounted for there. Um, so Boise State still bringing the blitz, but just not as much of a heavy pressure focus. And, and Utah State, honestly, to their credit, 
doing a really good job overall of picking up oh, just dropped my pencil um utah state overall doing a pretty good job of picking up that pressure uh, even when boise state was bringing the blitz and so for boise state on this one defensively i think the issue for concern is you would say get, maybe not getting to the quarterback but i think there was a little bit more of a schematics trying to go into that coverage but if you are trying to push more of a coverage 300 and uh, again 372 yards passing when most of that is underneath you and they're just you're not in position to go make the tackle or they're breaking the tackle or getting you know it's well blocked that is a problem and a concern that could could be a factor Boise State needs to look into moving forward but overall in this matchup for Boise State 17 points in the first half 13 points in the second half, 30 points overall, higher than what they've given up in some of their other games, but still a really, really strong defensive effort. And what's more importantly here is multiple three and outs. It wasn't like Utah State was going out there and driving every time. Opens up the game with a three and out. They had, I think, three or four more three and outs throughout the game. And then even more importantly that, the bend but don't break and stopping on those fourth down attempts or in the red zone. Boise State, fourth down attempt there, drive number nine. Another long pass gets them inside. Uh, of the red zone they go for it on fourth and down and McCoy forces first off a huge pass defended to force the fourth down huge pass defended um one of those points where it could have been a touchdown one of those slants one of those again mid-range short mid-range throws McCoy actually in great position on that one forces a deflection and then then they try that wide receiver screen which they'd gotten effectively for a 26 yard run earlier in that drive Try that inside screen and gums the defensive lineman blows it up and so boise state they had great it, it gave up some elements they gave up some opportunities throughout this matchup defensively but they throughout consistently they were stopping the drives that's only 17 points in the first half even though they give up 337 yards shows that consistently they may give up some deep plays but overall these drives are ending in four or punts or 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 fourth down attempts that that are ending up futile uh, and even when Boise State wasn't bringing that blitz, we still saw some coverage sacks, some coverage sacks or some coverage throwaways that then forced those fourth down punts. So I think the statistical perspective is a little skewed to what this game actually was. There was some great individual effort by Boise State. Shayla Depot, nine tackles, 0 0.5 tackles for loss. Herbert Gum, six tackles. And again, while he didn't have any tackles for loss or sacks, his presence today was huge. Blew up a couple of really big plays, stopped some big runs. He was all over the field. Simpson, six tackles, 2.5 tackles for loss. He had a massive game. And Amari McCoy, I know that he gave up that one on the touchdown, but overall, he is really developed. He played great last year, but he is really stepping up into that primary corner role for Boise State. One tackle, one pass defended, but he was all over the place. They were not trying to throw against him consistently in this game. And then uh, Banks, not that Washington transfer, you played big versus Washington State. He has continued to step up in that role. I thought he had another good game today. Some good open field tackles, two, three tackles, one pass defended. And of course, Ty Benefield, who's continued to be a strong part of this defense, three tackles and a fumble recovery. So there were some mistakes here by Utah State as well that helped Boise State out. But overall, defensively, they may have given up those yards. We saw that versus Washington State, but that bend but don't break, both on the field in their performance, but also that mentality. We're going to give up a big play here, but then we're going to get you on the next series. Every time we give up a play is another opportunity to force that three and out on the next play in that next set of, of plays for you on that drive. And so Boise State overall, really, really strong performance. Hope Hassanin is okay. He did hobble off there. Uh, he was kind of testing his leg. It didn't look super serious, so hoping that he's going to be strong and ready to come back next week. But overall for Boise State, again, playing their starters all the way throughout this game, but so was Utah State. And even though Utah State was giving everything they could, Boise State held them to 13 points in the second half and, and offensively a lot of yards, but not a lot of points. So Boise State defensively overall, going to give this a solid B-plus performance. Would like to see those yards come down. I think some other teams might be able to take advantage, you know, give up, give up so many consistent short range throws and I, I consistently they're going to be able to i think hit, maybe hit you over the top on one uh you know maybe have a more consistent running game boy state really good at stopping the run today so that needs to be worked on that needs to be fixed but overall boy state defense really stepping up had a really strong performance all right finally here special teams for boise state boy state special teams has not had a good start to the year i think that's putting it mildly they've been a key to the game you never want to be a key to the game uh at, at least as a special teams unit if you're a key to the game it usually means that it's an element that the other team could take advantage of 
And this is something you need to make sure you step up into that position. And so sometimes the keys to the game are, it's good to be that. And we, we're we're going to focus on you as a positive. But most of the time, if it's a key to the game, it's usually a weakness that Boise State needs to make sure they don't allow so they can win. And the special teams has been a key to the game. Not this one, but in kind of consistently has been those low grades of just not performing up to standard across the board. Now, Boise State in this one, that was not the case. This was a good, very, very strong special teams performance. Like, like we see the offense, the passing game starting to, meet its potential i think the special teams i think we start to see them stepping up into their potential that 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 kickoff that stacy collins has been working with the kick with special teams it just hasn't looked great started to be a little more consistent today you know boy state did give up a couple long returns they gave a return of 30 another run out to the 34 uh there were some long returns there but they also had a great kick where they think it's touching back in the end zone it checks up at the one forces a return and then boy state's able to get them down at the 11 i thought first half there were some 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 issues with the coverage on the return but the second half boy state putting those all together and again utah state still playing their starters still playing everyone they can to try and win this game not effective on special teams in the return game that stop at the 11 they had another really good stop at the 21 boy state overall in this one of course the key players of boy state have been great all year long i mean the kicking and the punting game those continue to be strong but the coverage unit overall i thought we started to see them blend together it wasn't a perfect game for them but we started to see them stepping up and they didn't allow any massive mistakes or massive errors jonah dalmas two of two long of 48 he's now the all-time scoring leader in mountain west history uh, and so uh, eight for 84th most mount made field goals, so all time field goals in Mount West history. Uh, so he's made 84. I made it on a long on a 49 yard field goal, made that record. And he's also the all time scorer in Boise State history. So taking Kyle Brotsman's spot there, of course, it helped me. Spe Previous special teams, we both predicted that uh, that Jonah Dalmas would be able to take that this season. And an incredible job by him. I mean, obviously, when you got Ashton Genty out there going out kick after kick after kick the extra point your leg is just getting sore out there you're gonna have the opportunity to score uh, but he's just an incredible athlete that's able to go out also in those high tense pressure situations with the longer kicks and make those as well and we saw that in this matchup as well boy state punting which has been incredible all season because of Joe, uh, james ferguson reynolds obviously james ferguson reynolds gets hurt last year and so Ta tara Sh tara tarin sorry tarin sheave i was i don't know why i was trying just struggling to pronounce that first name so much uh tarin sheave he came into the game for Boy State versus Washington State, and they first game, first punt, not great. Second punt, much better. And I think overall in this matchup, he performed really, really well. He had two punts for an average of 56 yards and a long of 71. The Both of those were some issues with the coverage. The first punt was to the 54, and then uh, they were able to return it nine yards because he kind of outkicked his coverage. He caught it on the run, was able to run it back. But on the second punt, Boise State should have gone down and down that the one. That should have been a 71-yard punt to the one-yard line, unfortunately. Or a 70-yard punt to the one-yard line. is a 71-yard punt to the end zone. What happened is that it looked like the punt was going out of bounds. The, the return team kind of stopped, and then it didn't go out of bounds. It hit right on that edge line and continued to trickle down towards the end zone. They tried to recover, get down there, got to it right as it was rolling. And I think if they had played to the whistle, played all the way down to the end of the play, they would have had a chance to stop that one. So unfortunately, kind of a great opportunity for Taryn taken away there. Uh, but great performance overall in the punting game. And the highlight of the night, the highlight of the night for the Boise State uh, special teams. And he had some plays on offense as well, getting some opportunities in the second half. But the highlight of the night for the Boise State special teams, the highlight of the season for Boise State special teams was Dylan Riley. 96 yard touchdown return if anybody watched my review of the signing class if anybody watched my preview of the special teams for Boise State if anybody has watched almost every single video coming into this one where we've just not had consistent strong returns you have heard me say get Dylan Riley in the game the jet he's got the speed he's the fast I believe he's the fastest player on this roster he's definitely one of the fastest players on this roster he's young he's energetic he wants an opportunity to prove himself get Dylan Riley involved in the return game and actually the return before the 96 yard touchdown he actually he was out there he called a fair catch and I actually wrote it down right here 
Dylan Riley in the kick return game. This could be exciting. I'm going to talk about this is awesome that Boy State's using him. The very next kick return, Dylan Riley gets it, takes it back for 96 yards. And so I get to talk about that and not just the fact that, oh, wow, they're actually using him. There's going to be some opportunities later this season. The opportunities are now. The Jet is in full afterburner mode, and it is in the pattern, and it is scoring touchdowns. And Dylan Riley, incredible kick return. Uh, one of the most impressive I've seen here in a while for Boise State. It's been a long time since we had a kick return back for a touchdown. I didn't do the historical research on that to find out exactly when the last time was, but definitely not so far this season, and I'm not at any point last season either. Um, I think you probably have to go back to maybe Avery Williams, I think, to find a kick return for a touchdown for Boise State, and I'm not sure on that, so don't quote me on it. Uh, but Dylan Riley, he's going to be... I, I, I love that they are incorporating these young players, these young players that maybe they're not the primary guys and they're going to work their way into this offense uh, or this team overall, but they're finding ways to use the talent on this roster. They excite the speed. This was one of the fastest signing class for Boise State, and the next one looks even faster potentially, so that's exciting. But, you know, Cameron Bates, another one of those guys who's, He's not the primary guy, and he's still learning the playbook, but they're finding ways to use him. Dylan Riley, a guy with that level of talent, you know, you've got to find ways to involve him in the game for Boise State. He had a good good game running as well. He had a uh, 8 of 16, long of 12, had some, and two receptions for uh, nine yards as well. Had some really good, strong power runs, I thought. Uh, so Dylan Riley, good game as well, coming in there in the second half for Boise State. But in the first half, as a primary part of this route in the first half, 96-yard kick return. This is going to give you if you have a if you have a kick return for a touchdown, it's going to automatically make it an A. If you don't have any major mistakes overall in the special teams unit, it's going to bump that up. And then if you also have a your kicker, Jonah Dawn must go out and break school and Mountain West records, and your punter have a good game as well. A plus performance for the special teams. Most improved unit so far this season from game to game, at least. We'll have to see if the consistency can continue. And there were still some get some kick returns that were given up that Boise needs to work on. But overall, the explosiveness was there. The consistency, for the most part, in the kick return, at least especially in the second half defensively, was there. The punting game is continuing to step up. Again, Taron doing a great job stepping into the shoes of James Ferguson Reynolds, who hopefully won't be out too long in assembly. The rumor mill was saying he might be back to the UNLV game. I've not confirmed that. I'm not going to put any kind of legitimacy behind that, but hopefully not out for too long. But even in his stead, Taron doing a great job stepping up. So Boise State, overall, a lot of improvement. Offense, defense, special teams. I really liked what I saw overall from the Boise State uh, performance in this game. One to be very, very excited about. And then finally here, just grade my keys to the game for Boise State. Key number one, uh, avoid the post-win letdown. A-plus performance on that one. Boise State looked motivated. The team, the fan base looked motivated. 37,000 plus of you again in the stands for this. Fifth highest attendance. So not the most highest attended like last week, but that's a that's a hard that's a hard one to beat. But fifth highest attended overall. Homecoming week as well. So many players back in the stands. And for Boise State on this one, hu huge performance from all phases, offense, defense, special teams a plus uh, Madsen stepping up and again i didn't say this that you needed to step up for the fans but he needed this for himself he needed to build that chemistry with wide receivers to show defenses coming up that they have to consider him as a threat and give Ashton Genty more opportunities that to give him the confidence to be able to step out there and go okay i've done that i've i've gotten past maybe the roughness of the start of the season i ha i am now able to step into the role that we saw him playing last year this confidence booster was huge. And it was all, I, I said in my keys of the game, we don't need the deep ball. We don't need the short pass. We need to figure out how to complete the mid-range, the contested mid-range passes. Boise State did that today. Max Madsen, most of those throws, now Boise State's receivers were averaging, you know, 11, 18 plus yards per catch. But they were catching that ball most of the time at like the 10-yard line. There was those mid-range throws. Matt, there was some good runs after catch as well with Max Madsen. Getting the ball out quickly and into those mid-range routes, really building up, stepping his, uh, stepping up, and building his own confidence there. Incredible performance from Max Madsen, A plus overall. And then finally here, uh, defense complete the picture. This one still needs some work. There was uh, they didn't give up too many huge plays on the back end, um, and they definitely score wise didn't give up a lot. But they're still struggling with that coverage point. You know, 370 plus yards passing. Um, the pressure was not as strong, so maybe that played a factor here. But Defensive complete the picture overall. I'm going to give that a C plus. I think there's still some issues in the secondary, especially in that underneath passing game. That's definitely a concern that Boise State needs to make sure that they are finding ways to fix going forward. So for Boise State in this game, it wasn't a perfect performance, but it was very, very near to one in a lot of ways. A outstanding game for Boise State and one that I think should help boost them in the rankings. Crazy up upsets around college football. Now, unfortunately, between that like number 12 or really be like number 15 and 20 spot, most of those teams didn't play today. And so Boise State not going to have an opportunity to have a bunch of teams right in front of them lose and they'll be able to 
jump in front. I, I think they'll move up a couple of spots here, maybe jump into the top 20. But overall, a game that you needed a statement win, you need to have a statement win in the, leading up, not just for Ash and Genty, his Heisman push, but for Boise State having to try and stand out with a, a group of five team with a loss on their record and no other opportunities to get a true power four win. They need to make sure that every win throughout the rest of the season is a statement win, especially against lower level teams like this. They should not be competitions and it wasn't. Boise State clearly showing that they are on a step above the teams like Utah State in this conference. So we'll have to see how it goes next week. I look forward to that game preview. Make sure you like, subscribe, make sure you continue to interact. I want to hear your thoughts on this game. How you thought Max Matson played. How you, obviously, Ashley Genty, that's going to be a fun one. Uh, but his defense, I want to know your thoughts on this defense, offense, overall. Just excited you, what you think Boise State needs to improve. All of that, that analysis, I want to hear all of that in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe. And as always, go Big Blue!